Well, the river here is already a raging torrent. Today, Sarah Harris hired a boat to see the city from the front line of the emergency. This is the mighty Brisbane River in all her fury. Seething and foaming, tearing everything apart. To comprehend the power of all this water, you have to feel it. Like a death adder. Looks good sometimes, but can bite you real hard if it wants it. Archie Harding knows this river better than most, but it's been a long time since he's seen her this angry. That was back in 74, when he was working as a coast guard during the flood. The sort of thing you, look, you don't really want to remember, but uh, it does come back and bite you when you look at it again like this year. This is probably not, not quite as bad yet, but don't forget we've still got two days to go. Haven't we? It feels like we're being thrown about in a washing machine as we push against the current that's punching downstream at 15 knots. And everywhere there are floating reminders that just being here is dangerous. This is the moment when a floating restaurant was torn from its mooring and ripped apart by the raging torrent. Minutes later, the crumpled, mangled mess of steel and wood was passing our boat kilometres downstream. Believe it or not, this is actually low tide, but still we have to take it fairly slow because these waters are like a minefield of floating debris. So far we've seen logs, we've seen refrigerators, massive water containers and even a pontoon with a boat still attached, all hurtling down the Brisbane River like submarine missiles. A few times our motor cuts out as it chokes on mud and submerged trees. Got to get out of this rubbish, guys. We've got to go. Then, for a brief moment, there's panic as this powerboat stumbles and almost topples as it tries to flee to a safer mooring. For 24 hours now, the Brisbane River has held a city hostage, slowly strangling streets and homes near her banks. Locals here are mesmerised by her strength. Oh, you kind of wonder what's underneath all that. Like, there'd be, there'd be lots of bits of steel and all manner of stuff coming down there. There's, uh, you know, like sunken boats. Who knows what's there, you know, there's probably, you know, we've seen water tanks. Oh, it'd just be a big whirlpool down the bottom there, I think. Anybody would be, you know, silly enough to go in that, they'd just, they'd just be um, endangering their lives. Those who got too close were quickly moved back. <laughs> Authorities worried she could turn on her neighbours in an instant. Sarah Harris, Nine News. As we know, the majority of victims of these floods are Queenslanders, but the relief effort is taking on a truly national feel. Today, members of the New South Wales Fire Brigade flew out to take part in the mammoth operation. They'll be joined by colleagues from the ACT, Victoria, Tasmania and South Australia. And don't forget, if you'd like to help out, you can donate to the Flood Relief Fund by calling 1800 219 028. That's 1800 219 028. There's much more to come in this special flood crisis news hour. I'll take you on a grim aerial tour of Queensland's inland sea. Plus, the crisis grows in New South Wales as floodwaters surge across the border. Tonight, the latest on Australia's flood crisis in a special one-hour edition of Nine News, followed by a current affair live from the floods. At 7.30, Australia take on England in the 2020. Then we return for a Nine News special in the most extensive flood coverage, with regular updates throughout the night. Friends, bogans, countrymen, put down your beers. Europe is under threat. This time, it's not the volcano that, like any typical European, has an unpronounceable name and smokes too much. It's an Australianism. It's sweeping through the continent faster than spread betting through a subcontinent cricket team. Which is why the Euro economy is having about as much success as Mel Gibson getting a date. Or the BP chairman asking for a bonus. Europe has lost sight of its lamb heritage. You've got the EU headquarters in a city named after a sprout. The French eating frog's legs instead of lamb legs. And the Greeks have gone from lamb and pitta to deep fried chook and pizza. What a bunch of cretins. And they can stop gloating about inventing democracy too. It took almost as long to work out who was running Australia as it did to find out the winner of Australia's next top model. No wonder so many people go the donkey vote. Sorry, Stavros. The Italians are on the right track. Lambretta, Lambrusco, Lamborghini. But there's still a long way to go. So the message is clear. 
If Europe wants to fix its problems and be truly united, it should join Australia in throwing some lamb on the barbie and celebrating International Australia Day on January 26th. Together, we can rid the world of this dark spectre of un-Australianism. We shall light them on the beaches. We shall light them in the streets. And we shall never surrender our tongs until our chops are perfectly cooked. So wherever you're from, don't be un-Australian. Eat lamb on International Australia Day. You know it makes sense. I'm Sam Kekovic. The Doors Plus range of ultra-safe security and safety doors gives you peace of mind and lets the breeze flow through. Mum! Order now for quick installation. Visit the showroom today. Doors Plus, no fuss. Get into Target's Bumper Babython from tomorrow for this HiPod booster seat, now $149. And save 50% off this Sandford cot, now only $174.50. Target's Bumper Babython, it's the first stop for all babies. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the flood crisis here in Queensland. The natural disaster, one of the worst in our country's history, continues to threaten the lives and the homes of thousands of people. Earlier, I went up in the Nine News helicopter to see for myself the scale of the disaster. This is the swamped and battered landscape of southeastern Queensland. The towns and farms smack in the path of the flash flood that cost lives and livelihoods. From the air, well, the massive brown stain of the deluge and the debris of the disaster says it all. The ranges west of Brisbane were already saturated from weeks of heavy rain. The new downpours had nowhere to go. The land simply couldn't soak it up, so it raced away. It was like a giant water slide. Most of the water from the storms, which unloaded on the inland ranges, is now running east and is hitting Brisbane. Ipswich, though, was in the way, and hundreds of homes were swallowed up by the flood. Yesterday, the only water on the city streets below were actually raindrops. Now, it's like an inland sea. A rough guess? Well, the amount of water which fell in and around Ipswich and the Lockyer Valley would have more than filled Sydney Harbour. And all that water, with an unstoppable power, churning into the Bremer River. Further north, the water was flooding down every creek and gully into the massive Wyvernhoe Dam, which sits across the Brisbane River. It's the capital's water supply. The dam just can't cope. It was down to a tiny 17% in the recent drought. Now, it's gauged at a whopping 190% of its normal capacity. The overflow, the water they simply have to release, is tearing down the Brisbane River and meeting up with the Bremer River. Two big water sources funneling basically into a drinking straw. Destination, the streets and homes of the Queensland capital.